Hello, my name is Jonathan Bisnett, and today I've got a circuit here to show you that's it, been inspired by a comment made on a previous video I did. Uh, a while back I did a video on driving an LCD display without a controller. And somebody made a comment on it that uh, why didn't I use uh, a 4000 series chip? It would be easier. Well, it truly would be easier but at the time I was trying more to prove exactly what was happening rather than accomplish things using another chip uh, but in light of the comment I thought alright why don't I go ahead and put this together using a uh, uh, in this case I used a CD4055 chip there's actually a series of three chips here a 4054, a 4055 and a 4056 uh, the 4055 allows you to drive individual digits and you can string several of them together whereas the 4054 and the 4056 kind of work in conjunction to drive a whole series of digits in a cascaded type fashion so considering I was simply trying to drive two digits I decided to go ahead and do this with a relatively uh, simplistic approach and use the 4055 so what I've got up here at the top, the, this, uh, this unit here is actually uh, a unit that, that has a 555 timer chip that I use to generate a clock pulse. So this gives me the, the frequency in that I need to drive this and right now it's running at about 50 hertz. Uh, so it, it basically uh, it's running off of this, uh, off the circuit I have here. Uh, in this case, I've got on the left hand side here a 5 volt supply, and there is actually a split in the middle, as you can uh, kind of see right there. There is a split, and what I've done is taken the ground rail of this 5 volt and tied it to the positive rail, in this case, of a 9 volt supply. So it really gives me a 14 volt range over which to uh, drive this circuit because what I need is both a positive and negative value uh, for the the 4055 chip in order to, to properly drive it. Now I could lose the 9 volts but you don't get a very clean uh, output uh, if you don't have both the positive and negative aspects of this. Uh, so what I've got is I've tied them together in a uh, in a fashion where it's 5 volts to ground and from ground down to 9 volts, 9 volts below ground. Uh, so I drive the, uh, the, the primary rails off of this, the positive and negative rails off of the 5 volt supply. So the, the red rail has got plus 5 volts, the blue rail has ground. Then additionally you'll see over here I take uh, these two green wires off of, in this case, negative 9 volts, the, the bottom part of my supply, and each one goes to one of these 4055 chips to provide the, uh, the VEE, I'm sorry, the, the VDD uh, value that we're uh, running this off of. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I correct myself again, it is the VEE, the VDD is the 5 volts. Um, so that gives the the lower potential that the chips each need to drive the, the everything from there. Then I take the this yellow wire coming off the 555 timer with basically my clock pulse. You'll see it comes over here and it also goes into uh, this chip here. Kind of hard to see where, but basically right next to the green wire it goes in there, and then what you'll see over here is off of pin 1 I have a resistor coming out uh, simply in this case to control the current in the circuit but a resistor coming out and then white wires coming off of it and the, the two white the two upper white wires go to uh, the uh, the first pin and the last pin on the uh, LCD display and they actually provide the alternating waveform that that drives this display and LCD, LCD displays are capacitive in nature so you need to constantly cycle them back and forth do not apply direct current to them in a continuous fashion eventually you'll burn them out and they will be worthless and it won't take a lot uh, they, they need their capacitive so they need to constantly cycle back and forth con with reversing polarity 
So the clock pulse coming in gets handled through the chip and out comes the clock signal or the signal that we use to drive the digits on the LDD, LCD display. And in this case, they're common to the entire display. There isn't one for each digit like you find in a multiplexed LED. They're simply common to the whole thing. I just wired them both. Uh, the other two white wires are coming over here and going into the two uh, connectors that actually drive the um, uh, the decimal points. I didn't want them to light up. So if they're running at the same potential as the the cycle to drive the display, they'll never go on. They have to always they have to go opposite of it to opposite of the the driving signal in order to light the uh, segment. So they will always be at the same potential. They'll never light. Uh, otherwise, they tended to shadow a little bit and things like that. They, they weren't heavily lit, but you could tell that they were there because of just the capacitive nature of what's going on here. Then uh, you'll see the yellow wires here are, uh, let me back out here a little ways, the yellow wires here on the left are actually coming out of this uh, uh, first switch here on the left. And the and for the other chip, the yellow wire is coming out of the second switch. And what you'll uh, what you'll notice is these are actually um, uh, rotary type uh, switches. I can turn them to change the numbers. So this gave me my inputs, and as you'll see right now, they're at 52, which is also what's on my display. And then finally, you'll see the blue wires here, which go out to the individual segments that make up the seven segment. Uh, and then there's brown wires coming off this one. I did that just to kind of show the difference uh, off of each of the chips. I'm not using pin 1 off of this chip because actually pin 1 in, in both cases would provide the same output. There was really no point in uh, using the second pin 1. So it's really left empty. But you'll notice that that second green, uh, sorry, you'll notice that the yellow wire here coming in, I also have a yellow wire going across the front here and into, let's see, right here, this yellow wire, oops, nope, that's not it, sorry, correct myself, this orange wire, this orange wire coming off the front here going over to carry the, the clock in signal to both chips. So it's coming in off that, uh, off the yellow wire into this chip, off the orange wire into that chip. So that drives the, uh, the output of both. And as you'll see, I've got output. Now I can go over here and as I turn these, you'll see the numbers change really simply. And if I turn the other one, the other number will change. And I can go either direction, obviously. Um, and it works just fine. It's actually a very effective uh, setup. Certainly easier than what I did uh, in my previous video. But then again, as I said in that video, I was really trying to, to show how the signals worked more, more than how to drive, truly drive an LCD, but anyway, that's how this works. Uh, I hope you uh, found it interesting. You might want to look into uh, CD4055. That's the chip I used. Uh, I actually used two of them here and a very simple LCD display. Uh, hope you found it interesting. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.